I know that a lot of you have been very patiently waiting for the new 1.7 build videos on my channel. And don't worry, they're coming very soon. But before I finished up those videos, I thought it was kind of important to touch up on something else first. And that is the new face masks that are being added to the game and of course the way that they're being added. For those that don't know, patch 1.7 is coming with a new vanity item type in the form of these full face masks that of course do not actually increase the player's stats but will still be pretty desired by a lot of players simply because they look cool and people want to look cool. The only way to currently get them in the game is to place yourself high up on those global event leaderboards through grinding out the global events. And as far as I understand it, the leaderboard is broken up into three tiers. Players in tier 1 will receive one of those face masks, then the players in tier 2 will receive two of those face masks, and as you might have guessed, players in tier 3 will get all three face masks in the game. And again, other than that, there's no other way of obtaining the masks in the game at all. Now, to place yourself into a higher tier, you need to get a certain amount of global event tokens per hour. I'll dive a little bit deeper into how this works exactly and why it is also a problem for the game very soon in this video, but what's important to keep in mind for now is that only a certain amount of players are allowed to be in these leaderboard tiers. I don't have the exact numbers, so I could be a bit off, but uh, from what I could gather is that the top 50% of the player base will be able to place themselves in tier 1 or higher, which means that they get one of those masks. Then above that, around 10 to 15% of the player base, again, I don't have the exact numbers, will be able to place themselves in tier 2, which then gives them two masks, and then only the top 2 or 5% of the players will be placed in tier 3, granting them that last mask as well. So yes, that essentially means that the bottom 50% of the player base will not get a mask at all, in any way, ever. And that the bottom 95% of the player base will never get access to that face mask that is tied to tier 3. Now the reason why Massive has chosen to go with a system like this is, I guess, because they wanted to reward performance. You know, whoever can farm the fastest will be given a special reward for their dedication to the game, which they can then show off to other players to kind of stroke their EP in another everyday division things. As you can imagine, this decision has brought up quite a discussion. On one side, you obviously have the players feeling sort of left out because, you know, they got four jobs, 12 kids, seven wives, and they can only play the game every fifth week of the month, which yes, I'm kind of making fun of them now. I'm kind of making fun of that argument, but hey, they actually, they do have a point. You have these new cool vanity items which could potentially be a reason for players to log on and check the game out in the first place but then instead of actually giving them the opportunity to grind those things out they are getting no chance at all to ever get those items. And then of course you also have the other side of the spectrum. You have guys like me who are essentially glued to the desk that could potentially say hey you know what it's only a cosmetic thing why can I not be rewarded for the time I put in you know many other games have exclusive mounts and skins for certain skill based or time based achievements why can't the division have that? Should everything be spoon fed to every single player out there? Those are kind of the two perspectives that I'm seeing and I know it's very tempting to go to the comment section right now or go to Reddit or even go to the state of the game Twitch chat and roast each other down for a different opinion. But before you do that, think about this for just a second. You know, regardless of which side you're on, regardless of what your opinion is, there's one thing that is very clear, and that is that a big portion of the player base is not really satisfied with the current implementation of these masks and how to get them. So the only real question that we could all collectively be asking is, is how do we fix this and make it work for both parties, make everybody happy? To answer that question though, I think we first have to take a closer look at the functionality of the leaderboards. Because unfortunately, the leaderboard itself, it comes with two big problems. Firstly, the obvious elephant in the room, which is that doing the same mission over and over and over again, in this case, Clear Sky, is almost always going to be the best way to get up there. And thus, a lot of people feel forced to do the same missions over and over and over again. And it becomes a very boring, repetitive experience instead of the dynamic experience that we would have wanted from the global events. That is one problem, but then we also have the problem that the leaderboards are very open to exploitative behavior and a lot of content cheese to get way ahead of even the best players in the game. Now the first problem, admittedly, I saw that coming from a mile away. I mean, I played the PTS, it isn't without a reason that I created that Clear Sky tutorial a few weeks prior to the release of 1.7. You know, I wanted to give everybody a fair chance at competing for that number one spot, but as soon as the majority of the player base will also figure out how to effectively boost their stats onto the leaderboards, 
Anybody trying to get up there in a fair way will find themselves unable to do so. Again, it comes back to that cheesy and exploitative behavior. You see, the way that the leaderboard decides what your score is, is that it looks at all the time that you've played in the week of the global event, and then it takes the hour that you've performed the best, that you've gathered the most global event tokens, and puts that as your score. It is always an hour period long, so if in the time frame between 1pm and 2pm you got a total of 3500 global event credits, then your score on the leaderboards is going to be 3,500. But if you then lay there, farm a little more efficient, you know, you got your group together and you break your score and get a total of 4,500 global event credits within one hour time frame, then that will be your new leaderboard score. And then at the end, when the week ends, when the global event is finished, the leaderboard simply checks who has the highest score and then gives rewards based on the results. Now again, as we've seen, this forces everybody to simply do the same mission over and over again, the one that gives you the most amount of credits in the least amount of time. For grouped players, this is gonna be Clear Sky. For a lot of other players that play solo, this is gonna be Lexington. It just kind of depends on your group and what kind of playstyle you have, I guess. But in any way, it kind of pushes players away that actually want to play anything else besides those missions. Because they're never, never going to get up there on the leaderboards. Which basically excludes them from the opportunity of getting one of those new face masks. That is the first major problem that comes with a system like this. Now the second big problem is, is that players can do a lot of things to move the global event credits earned from one hour to the next hour. And basically stack as many rewards as possible in a one hour time frame to per permanently boost themselves up to the top of the leaderboards. It sounds very complicated, but even something as innocent or simple as saving your last 10 caches, which give a few global event tokens by the way, and then opening them all at the same time, it can contribute to this. Because yes, you spent a whole lot of hours saving up those 20 or 30 last 10 caches, but if you then open them all within the same hour, you just earned yourself two or 3,000 extra global event credits in that same hour. So that's already gonna boost your score for your best hourly run up a whole lot on top of the leaderboards. But it doesn't just stop there because again, something as simple as just completing a legendary mission just before your hourly time frame starts, can also boost your score by about 1750 points. All it requires you to do is to time it correctly when you complete the mission. Me and my team tried to maximize points yesterday by doing all of the high reward missions within one hour, but then every time just before the mission was completed, just with like a few mobs left or just one more button to press, we simply left the mission area and started another mission. And we did that over and over and over again, which caused us to not get the points for the mission. But get this, once we had every mission pretty much cleared, ready to be completed, the second hour started and we simply fast traveled from mission to mission, completing them all within a minute or two from each other, which kick started our hourly points by a good 6,000 points or so. After that, for the remainder of that hour, we simply went back to farm clear sky and the difference in points, it was quite insane. Without preparing these missions at all like the way we did and essentially cheesing the content, we got a top hourly point amount of just about 10,000. This was from doing Clear Sky over and over and over again and this was our legit score. But then, after we decided to check out how many points we could get by simply stacking the missions like this and then farming Clear Sky, well, our top hourly score went up to 16,545 and that's quite an insane amount. That's the difference of 6,000 I was talking about. And that point amount of difference, it would be enough to push anybody, any player from tier 1 to tier 3 onto the leaderboards, regardless of the player's skill, regardless of the time put in, and it would really rob another player from his rightfully earned mask. I hope that you can see now how this is going to be a very big issue. Me and my team, we only prepared a few missions because we wanted to try it out, see if it worked, you know, we weren't sure the first time around. But if you go full tryhard mode at this, maybe get some friends to invite you at the end of the missions, like set everything up perfectly, you could boost yourself far past the 20,000 score mark on the leaderboards. And I guess some people have caught on to that as well, as we can see right here. On top of that, and this is also a PC specific issue, but I'm pretty sure that some of the people on this list are also hackers. Having a pretty insane high score on here, but only having a few days or even a few hours of playtime in some cases. And you could just say, oh, who cares about the exact rank? Who cares about number one? As long as you're in the top whatever, as long as you get all the masks, you know, it's fine. But in this case, it really is not fine because each tier only has a certain amount of player spots. 
So when these hackers are getting the top spots, it essentially means that they're pushing everybody away from the vanity items. In this case, the hacker players are literally robbing legit players of their vanity items, of their masks. And this too, it is a very, very big problem. This is not just me calling Wolf, by the way, and saying, oh, he got a high score, he must be a hacker. No, the number 10 on the leaderboards, for example, he only has 15 hours of playtime in the division. It might be a new account. But I highly doubt it, and the same goes for 75% of other accounts on there as well. Some even admitted in whispers that yes, they did indeed hack. That's, that's the point that we're getting to right now. Nice anti-cheat. Now, I personally think that vanity items tied to actual skill-based player achievements, they are fine in any game. I understand that some people need that extra carrot, and I understand that competitive players, they want to have the salami stroke, they want to show off how good they are. But the current implementation of the leaderboards and the masks, it doesn't implicate skill at all. It's very abusable, it's very cheesable, and I hate to say it because it sounds so harsh, but I don't think it could have been implemented much worse than this. And tying the cool and new vanity items to the broken leaderboard system, that's just throwing oil into the fire. To top it all off though, it also appears that the leaderboard isn't tracking the data correctly for some of the legit players out there. One of my own teammates who did every single run that we did as well, he pretty much did the exact same thing as we did, who yesterday, by the way, had a high score of 10,000 points, has now, for no reason, suddenly dropped down to only 1,000 points, while the same day, while we did the same farming with him, we got 16,000 points. So something is obviously going on here, and I highly fear that this could happen to any other other player as well. Imagine sitting very safely in tier 3 of the leaderboards on the very last day of the global events, but then just before the global event ends, bam, suddenly your score is gone and now you don't get any of the rewards. That's gonna make a whole lot of people really, really angry. But anyway, now that we've talked about the big, big problems, I think it's also time to look at what we can do about it. Now, I don't really have a solution for the hackers, that's that's their thing. Um, I, I have no technical knowledge of what goes into fighting hackers and that kind of stuff. But I can look at the leaderboard mechanics and maybe change some things up to make it a more fun experience. I personally think that the leaderboard should be transformed into more of a daily mission type of thing, where you have a few different activities, such as maybe clearing missions within a certain time, or more set in stone objectives, like killing 20 clear bosses, or maybe getting 50 headshot kills with a marksman rifle. And once players meet those requirements, once they complete the objective, they would be rewarded with, uh, for example, a cache that gives them an extra classified item. Now you might say that sounds just like a daily mission, what does the leaderboard have to do with this? But this is where it gets a little bit interesting. All of these activities per day they would be tracked and for people that keep going past that cap, past the 50 headshot kills or past the 20 cleaner boss kills, all of those stats would be tracked for that day. And if players happen to be on the top 50% or the top 25% or the top 5%, then the leaderboard could, for example, give them extra caches on top of what they already get for even more classified gear set items. This way, everybody, even the casuals, sort of have a reason to log on every day and complete those objectives and then get some classified gear out of it. And for the hardcore players, they can try to stay top 25% or top 5%, and if the rewards are sufficient enough, then they have other stuff to do than just clear sky as well. It changes up the game for everybody. Now the face masks, I wouldn't really tie them to any of the rewards. Like if players can't get top 5% every day, then that shouldn't be a reason for them to never be able to get those items. What I would have liked to see is I would tie them to the new recommendations that you introduce into the game where after completing a whole list of them and i mean a pretty pretty long list which is gonna take some time to complete they will be given to the player as a reward for doing those this way yeah the hardcore players that put a lot of time in they're gonna have those masks early and they can show off how good they are at the game but it also means that on the long term even the most casual players if they really really want it they can get one of those masks as well. And this way, people have also something to grind for outside of the global events. I don't think that's such a bad idea. But this is just what I came up with real quick. I'm sure that the collective minds of everybody here in the comment section or everybody at Massive can think of much better alternatives. And I know Massive watches my videos. My god, my, my god, god follow fine. him, run. He's famous. Get him, get, get him. That guy is famous, where is he? I've seen him. Oh, Look at that. Oh, oh. oh. Grovel, famous. Grovel, Grovel. Fam famous Marcus Marcus Tai, notice me! <laughs> notice, notice me, me Senpai! Notice me, Marcus Tai! Oh! oh! So fucking rude. No, that was rude. Those YouTubers that are was, so fucking yeah, arrogant. Yeah, that was not okay. You have no respect okay. whatsoever for the, like, the small people like us. <laughs> so yeah, please look into these things before the next global event goes live and pull back the mask rewards from the current one 
Because honestly, these top spots on the leaderboards, they're not earned in a fair way. It just promotes cheating, exploiting, hacking, that kind of stuff. And it would be really backwards to reward those players with some exclusive shit that no one else can get. That's gonna send a weird message. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be all for today. Let me know what you think. And as always, I will see you guys later. Or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.